I'm blue, da boo dee, da boo die, demonetized. Anyway, hello and welcome back to Squirrel Punch, <laughs> when today we're talking about Doctor Strange 2 and the multiverse of madness, or as I like to call it, Doctor Strange 2, multiverse of infinite sadness. Also, spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, <laughs> put, Paco, edit this into the beginning, spoilers. And Joven, you you were just now able to see this movie. You've been on dad yes. duty. You were able I've to been on dad away. duty. I literally went off of YouTube, I went off of Twitter, I went off of everything for like days. Uh, and I know I saw a movie four days after it came out and still that felt like way too long. I'm not used to being that behind. Uh, all my friends had seen it. Everyone's in these text threads. I'm like, I, I went to your birthday party and someone said the words Sam Raimi. And I was like, I haven't seen it. Yeah, you were just yelling. Yeah, it was uh, <laughs> the, the spoilers were everywhere, man. Yeah, I uh, I saw it like a day after it came out and I had to stay off credit and stuff. Did you have anything spoiled for you? I knew that Charles Xavier was in the movie. Yes. Oh, yeah. That also, spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Put, Paco, edit this into the beginning. Spoilers. Dude, I also had annoying f***ing teenagers behind me. And, like, I first of all, I saw it, like, accidentally browsing the internet. But then some teenager behind me walked in and was like, I'm going to cheer so hard when Xavier's on screen. Oh. I'm like, if I hadn't already been spoiled, I would get out of my seat and whoop your ass, you little punk. I wouldn't really. I'm not about to assault a minor over a movie. <laughs> Why did they put that in the trailer? I, I didn't I still haven't seen the trailers, which I guess I can now watch. All right So that, that's a little bit funny you I guess you can turn down your rage of beating up teenagers down just a little bit because In the trailer they do they don't show him but you hear his voice. Oh wow I almost beat up a teenager for nothing. Thank yes you for, <laughs> thank you for letting me know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the reason why they do it is because when and just in case we haven't made it clear yet, more spoilers immediately after. Uh, oh, because you're expecting Xavier to pop up and they kind of gloss over him because mm -hmm. they do him last. Yeah. And then they give you John Krasinski as Reed Richards. And then that's a pop. And you're like, oh, snap. All right. Yeah, I guess he's a fan favorite choice for Reed Richards, but I don't care about yeah. the Fantastic Four at all. So I thought it was great when he got turned into spaghetti. <laughs> So I think it was producer Paco that that explained that he unravels the same way as if you were to cut a rubber band ball mm -hmm. and how it kind of like starts to like shoot out. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's that's that's, that's clever. great. He's a giant uh, rubber band ball. But I do think it's funny that you almost beat up a bunch of teenagers over something you thought was a spoiler. Yeah, but it was in the trailer, but I don't watch trailers. <laughs> it's just like stop putting stuff in trailers. Also, I have I was forced to watch the trailer for the new Thor movie. Because oh. their, their theater was so crowded that usually I get up and run out of the theater during the trailer, <laughs> which I did for No Way Home, and my wife can attest to it. I refused to watch a trailer for No Way Home when it was at the beginning of another movie. Why don't you just, like, like throw a little tantrum, close your eyes, come, pl plug up your ears, la, 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 I la, la. I should have, but I, I figured if I was going to hear snippets, because I would hear snippets through my fingers. I figured if I was going to hear snippets, I might as well just watch the whole thing. It didn't spoil too much. Yeah, it's... Vague. Uh, there's one thing that was in that trailer that made me go, "Oh, that's neat," and that's you know they they show Zeus. Yeah, but other than that, there was no yeah. there was no huge like spoilers. we knew about Natalie Portman. Yeah, so we knew that's... that was going to happen. That already we knew he was going to be with the Guardians because he leaves at the end of End Game but with the Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm also curious, like how much the Guardians are going to be in this movie. In the trailer, he does seem to take off, right? He just like yeah. pieces out to like go find himself. He starts off as as Fat Thor with them, and then you know, in the one scene that you see him with Chris Pratt, he's like all ripped again. So some time passes, but I, I don't. Yeah, I'm pretty so sure that's going to be most of the first act. It's probably done. like beginning. He takes off to go find himself. Uh, you know, the Guardians get in trouble. He has to go back and save the Guardians. If I if I were to be guessing how this movie's going to go. Yeah. Because like he also walks away from and, Oh, okay, I know that we're supposed to be talking about Doctor Strange today, but you know, Squirrel Punch. Thor walking away from the fight in that trailer is actually what I love about Thor in the comics. And it's why I think he's so different from Superman. I think Superman's a very boring character because he's too strong. Mm -hmm. So is Thor. Um, mm -hmm. he's a god. But in the comics, Thor, like the Avengers sometimes have to convince Thor to help them because it's so beneath him. He is a god. Yeah, that's an yeah. interesting like character flaw that he has is like, 
I'm a god. Why do I have to bother with this? Yeah, and so him walking away from that fight, I just got those vibes from it. And I was like, yeah. that's the Thor I want to see. I think that's a great negative trait. Yes, but this seems a bit... And again, I haven't read the Thor comics. I should. I'm going to start reading source material for these podcasts. But um, <laughs> it is... Uh, it is interesting because it's a little bit different in the trailer. I get the vibe that he's not leaving because he feels above it. He's leaving because yeah, he's been different. fighting battles for like thousands of years and he's not sure that's what he wants to do anymore. It's a very millennial plot line. It's like, is this really what I want to be doing with my life? <laughs> and it walks away. It's like it all of a sudden you just feel the real feels of life. You're like, oh, yeah. is this what I want to be doing? It's like it's taking the great resignation. And it's like, yeah, it's like if, I think I'm going to yeah. go and start a podcast with my friend and just talk about movies that we've seen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> Or like, what if I just started like brewing my own exotic teas and like selling those <laughs> online? It's like, that could be a thing, Fine. right? Laser corn's inner piece. They're all just like yeah. spicy teas. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd drink some of your spicy tea. I get around to starting that project right after Jorts Jams. <laughs> <laughs> We've spoiled one major thing and I then know. talked about a trailer. And anyone listening to this is probably angry that we're seven minutes in now and we haven't even really mentioned... Doctor Strange, maybe Paco can move this to the end. Anyway, let's talk about it. No. First of all, dropped on Mother's Day. This is an interesting tidbit. Dropped on Mother's Day weekend and uh, and Multiverse of Madness, M-O-M, -M, Mom, who was the main villain oh. in it? Scarlet Witch, why? Oh. Because she was mad she couldn't be a mom. Layers, layers on wow. layers. What a well-placed movie. Yeah. Someone was thinking I could just imagine like Kevin Feige having like a completely different story that he wants to do. And he's like, all right, when's this movie release? Oh, we're stuck doing it Mother's Day weekend. Hold on. Wait a second. Rewrite. Bring <laughs> yeah. in Sam Raimi. Oh, and by the way, you totally and we've already done spoiler alerts at this point, but you totally called it with Scarlet Witch being the villain. I think you said in our last podcast, it was just an offhand comment, but you're like, I think Scarlet Witch is being set up. To be the villain because I liked in the trailer that you didn't see. Yeah, they show some no. of the conversation with the with the tree where she's like, "Oh, ah, da 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 da," and that's. Uh, but you get to break the rules, and that's not really fair. And I was like, I don't like how she said that. I'm not as good as you is at not seeing trailers, but I'm, I'm getting a little bit better. A little bit better. I didn't watch any stri trailers for this movie, but I did go back to see if the trailers included that multiverse uh, traveling shot. Because I wanted oh. to stop and pause it on the different multiverses they travel through. But anyway, uh, yeah, so I did not know that Scarlet Witch was going to be the villain in that. Did it make you like WandaVision more by giving that show a payoff? No. Okay. <laughs> in fact, that first meeting, let's talk about that. She's like, oh, I, I figured you'd be here to talk about what happened. And what was the name of the town? Uh, West Westview. Westview. It's like, I figured you'd drop by to talk about what happened in Westview. And Doctor Strange is like, oh, no, I totally forgot to talk to you about that. <laughs> like, yeah, he, he literally like makes it a non-starter because he's like, yeah, at the end of the day, you fixed it. So that's all that matters. I'm like, whoa, so I can do anything bad that I want as long as I fix it afterwards. Yeah. Oh, I guess that's how the Catholic Church works, right? You just pray about it. Oh, Jesus. Like, sorry, I messed Random up Random attack there. on the ca uh, Catholic Church, <laughs> but deserved. It's a it's a flaw. It's an oversight. But yeah, I thought it was dumb that like canonically they haven't talked since that whole thing happened. Your whole his whole deal is like I keep a list of, you know, entities that could pose a supernatural threat to this world. And the magic user, the only magic user more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme is running around taking over towns. And you didn't like schedule that into your Google calendar to go talk to her. <laughs> Like, what the f <laughs> What if it's like, maybe he's like trying to be like a badass and he's like, he knows that Scarlet Witch is going to kick his ass if he tries to fix the situation. So I was like, oh, psh, I'm just, okay, I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to put that one for next Tuesday. I'll get to it. Oh, I keep pushing off that conversation with, with Wanda. I'll get to it because he just doesn't want to. <laughs> he's just legitimately scared. Yeah. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Did you hear this? And I feel like it was almost you who told me this. Originally, the, the weird commercial sequences we were seeing the weird kind yes. of dream sequences was supposed to be dr strange trying to reach wanda through the spell yes correct yes why did and that they even like again? blur i think they also blur them out of the of that of the post credit scene of the show i think it was a scheduling conflict i think i i don't know it you can never believe what you hear when it comes to that stuff 
I hate when they do shit like that, where like a character should be there. Just throw in anything that shows the character is busy or trying to do something or something. I hate when they just gloss over it. It annoys me. Pet peeve. Anyway, go on. You were going to move on to something else. The line in that opening scene when, when he's not opening, but in the beginning when he's talking to Wanda, it threw me off. Like it genuinely caught me off guard because... Uh, you know, they're being, uh, America is being hunted by something with runes. So it's some kind of witch background. And so they go to Wanda and I was like, oh, okay, that's a nice little thing. It, like, mm -hmm. it's not Agatha. We're going to see some other witches in this world, other magic users. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, Wanda drops the fact that she accidentally knows the name. It's like, oh, just bring America here. Oh, you didn't tell me the name, did you? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> yeah, they set it up so well. And they're like, and even Doctor Strange is like, oh, this smells real. And I'm like, oh, okay. Doctor Strange would clearly be able to tell if that was an illusion. So it must be real. And she's just gotten really into gardening. And then it's like, nope, guess not. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> that was a great moment. That was a great reveal. I'm glad that was not spoiled for me. Let's, let's talk about going into this movie. Uh, did you have any expectations were you excited that it was Sam Raimi did you because like it was kind of being touted as a as a horror movie mm -hmm. and I feel slightly misled by that but still had some actually no that that's that's not true this movie this movie got pretty messed up at times yeah but going into it were you like what were your thoughts so I like you know Sam Raimi's Spider-Man I like how he does superhero movies I like Evil Dead too I'm not that big of a horror guy but, you know, Sam Raimi is something I would watch. I wouldn't call myself a Raimi fanboy, but I'll watch some yeah. Evil Dead or something. I wasn't super hyped, but I also was like, okay, interesting choice. Let's see where this goes. Would you consider yourself uh, so a fanboy? I, I don't know if I would be a fanboy, but, like, you know, I've seen Darkman, so I, I guess I'm probably more of a Raimi, Raimi fanboy than, than others. Mm -hmm. um, but, yes, I do love horror movies. I absolutely love the Evil Dead franchise, uh, everything. Um, oh, man, Drag Me to Hell, absolutely Drag fantastic. Drag Me to Hell was very good. What I was worried about was when it comes to Marvel, sometimes they'll bring in a very stylistic uh, director, but they won't let them do what they do. And I was like, okay. So first off, Raimi was brought on after a different um, director. And I was like, are they going to let Raimi do Raimi things? And I, like, it's not that this movie could have only been told by Sam Raimi. This movie was the way it was because Sam Raimi directed it. And it, it the way that it's shot, the way that even just like some movements of like, you know, Wanda as she's like being all creepy and walking. Mm -hmm. um, the camera, the first person camera of scary things, fantastic. Yeah. Like just his touch. I loved how he made this movie. That made me very happy. I was just very excited to see a Sam Raimi Marvel movie. I definitely, uh, I agree with you. I definitely think he shook things up. And this did yeah. not feel like every other Marvel movie. And, and I like that. that. And after so many Marvel movies, you need a shakeup like that. It definitely felt different. And it was great. If you look at the <clears throat> best uh, superhero movies since the, the year 2000 and on, uh, ones that are always at the top of people's lists are, you know, Iron Man, Deadpool, Guardians of the Galaxy. They're somewhere in the mix because tonally they change things up at the time. Uh, before Iron Man, we had those, you know, those early 2000s, um, you know, Fox superhero movies and Sony superhero movies. So Iron Man just felt very different. Guardians gave us a, you know, a uh, entourage of characters to follow. They were anti-heroes at the same time, so it was different. Deadpool made fun of the franchises. Yeah. So this one, oh, also another one, um, Thor Ragnarok just tonally very different. It yeah. kind of put Marvel's voice on the map. Like, this is what a Marvel movie's like. And and this is another one of those movies where every six years we get something where it's like, all right, just shake it up a bit. And that's yeah. what we got. It was refreshing. It was different. Yeah, so Raimi's thing is like horror and, you know, James Gunn, obviously. I feel like James Gunn's superpower is like, he just has really good taste in music and he can make yeah. you care, care about an ensemble cast. But yeah, like, very well. I like that they choose these directors that kind of each bring something special. Um, here's a question I do have for you, and I will give my opinion afterwards. I have been seeing online, they said, people are saying some parts of this movie were genuinely scary. Agree or disagree? 
genuinely scary genuinely scary as in some people i've been seeing comments on like reddit and stuff i was scared at certain parts of this movie i i think that's subjective i grew up around horror mm -hmm. um they definitely got really intense with some stuff like i'm surprised uh zombie strange looked like zombie strange mm -hmm. um how uh, Wanda was killing some people in that in that alternate time uh, alternate universe mm -hmm. that was like pretty intense. Um, there was oh when they were running away from her and then they find Doctor Strange. There's like the shadow that was like creepily moving. Mm -hmm. There were some times when uh, Wanda was like moving in a very disturbing way. So I think not scary disturbing they did disturbing very well. I disagree. I or I disagree with those comments online. I agree with you. There was some, I, I wasn't even really that disturbed. I feel like the scary parts were almost like tributes to scary movies, like the camera movement yeah. was a tribute to Evil mm -hmm. Dead. The, her coming out of the mirror dimension was very The Ring. And I like appreciated the nods. I was like, oh, that's kind of like The Ring. But that's the thought I had. I wasn't like, ooh, that's freaky or scary. Yeah. Like, you know, it seemed more like an homage. Like the first time I saw The Ring, yes, I was very scared. But this just seemed like a reference to that. It's very hard to be scared when you're watching a superhero movie instead of a horror movie because horror movies rely heavily on build up and like audio mm -hmm. cues and building suspense. Whereas if the main character of your movie can shoot magic missiles out of his hands, it kind of takes away <laughs> some of that. Horror. It's automatic damage. Yeah. It doesn't miss. Exactly. So I don't. I wouldn't say that the movie is scary, but I did enjoy the homages to other horror movies. Yeah, like um, man, the reveal there in the third act when he's when he's like, "How are you going to sleepwalk when you know there's you're here?" It's like never said it. The body had to be alive. I was like, "What?" Oh, that, that was a and great just line. like the hand breaking through the rubble. I was like, "So perfectly done." That was a great line, and I did not expect there to be that payoff. For the uh, yeah, I, for the I buried worse things. He just like tosses them in a roof. I buried worse, and I was not. I'm like, okay, well, I guess that's how they're disposed. Like, yeah, of the who body. who knew that was the rifle on yeah. the wall, and we were gonna come back to that yeah, in, that, was in that way. Because you know, so in the trailer they show, you know, uh, technically, I don't think they show him as a zombie. Maybe he is a zombie, but they show like all the arms forming. And I thought that was the what if Doctor Strange showing up as like a bad guy in this movie. Not even thinking that's like, oh, okay, that's. Doctor Strange. It's interesting you mentioned the what if Doctor Strange because was Dark Doctor Strange? It was a similar character, but not quite. There was because, a similar, but not yeah. the same. And I feel like they could have, mm -hmm. but glad that they didn't because I don't want to make what if a thing that we have to watch. Yeah, what if, I would like to disconnect as much from what if as possible. But yeah. we did have Agent Carter. <laughs> Yeah, Who's yeah, she uh, same actress came back for Captain Britain, which was yeah. fantastic. Um, should we just talk about that part of the movie? Or, I'm because sorry, that's Captain the part Carter. that I did I say Agent Carter? Captain, Captain Carter. It, well, she was Agent Carter and then became Captain yeah. Britain. She was um, Captain Britain in this, but I think what they call her in that in What If is Captain Carter. Oh, I'm 90% okay. sure, but I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Flame me in the comments, people, if I'm wrong about that. As a hero, she, her her mantle is Captain Britain, but okay. you know. Hello, Loyal Squirrel Punch podcast listeners. This is producer Paco with a quick fact check. Joven's wrong. Haley Atwell is credited as Captain Carter in What If and Multiverse of Madness, whereas Captain Britain is an entirely different hero whose strength is based on his confidence, much like Joven. Thank you, and back to your regularly scheduled podcast. That scene, right, them going to the Illuminati, I thought that was just going to be, like, a great payoff just for these cool cameos. Mm. Um, the same actor from uh, playing Black Bolt from The Inhumans. Didn't watch way it. Way to have a... Heard it was terrible. Mm, Neither did I. Uh, I don't know if anyone really did. It was so bad, which sucks is because one of my very first Marvel MCU brand deal was actually for that show. And I, I was did so promote excited. It as I was well. like, yeah. <laughs> and let this be a lesson to you kids. Don't don't go watch something. Just don't listen to influencers. It. We have families so, yeah. to support. We're trying to get, to get that bag. <laughs> uh, also, this episode is brought to you oh, by. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't listen. 
listen, sponsors. We love you and watch everything that you tell us to promote. Uh, yeah, now I'm just very, I'm a lot smarter about picking my sponsors. Yeah. Uh, you, you can trust me now. Uh, but yeah, that, that whole scene then turning into not just like a committee of like the Illuminati, but then seeing like an amazing fight scene mm -hmm. where you get to see Monica Rambeau as Captain Marvel. You see Captain Britain there. Um, I, <laughs> yes, seeing uh, Reed Richards was really cool, but when everyone kind of shows up to stop Wanda, hmm. and you have like these three massive heroes that can do a lot of damage, and then Captain, Stretch, Captain Stretchy Pants just like slinks in front of everyone. It's like, <laughs> listen, Wanda, you don't want to fight us. And I'm like, yeah. get in the back, dude. Your power is yeah. to stretch. What are you going to do here? I don't know. Was, was he trying to like communicate on like a parent level? Because that failed. It's like, <laughs> is their mom still alive? Good, because I'm going to turn you into spaghetti bitch but that 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 fight um i i do like that reed richards just you know everyone's excited for him to play reed richards everyone's excited for a fantastic four movie but you need to remember reed richards his real weapon is his mind yeah his power is kind of whatever but how how good did it feel not only was there Professor Xavier, but he came out in his floaty yellow X-Men <laughs> yeah. 97 wheelchair. To the X-Men theme. <laughs> yeah. To the X-Men theme song. No, that was, uh, that was a moment. That was awesome. The things that I loved, right? I loved Sam Raimi's directing. I loved how he just visually how he told this story. Um, the Illuminati whole section of the movie was fantastic. Worth rewatching just for that alone because they went way over the top. Um, but... Was there anything that you didn't like about the movie? I might get some hate for this. I didn't like the musical magical fight scene. I mean, visually it was cool, yeah. but it took me out of the movie a lot. I'm like, wait, why are they using notes now? I didn't get that. It they have was weird, which I guess makes sense, but it just, it was it the, am I glad that it wasn't just lasers and fireballs? Yes. Did it make sense to me? No. If they wanted to switch it up, though, and here's one thing they didn't do. Like, both of those characters have the ability to summon monsters into the world. Why not switch it up with, like, a Pokemon-style monster versus monster or demon versus demon fight where they're kind of, like, controlling <laughs> them? Where Doctor Strange just takes his hat and turns it yeah. backwards. And look, it was, a, it was a moment for Danny Elfman to shine. But, like, if you want to have that, like, please set it up for me a little bit. Be like... Oh, we've traveled to a dimension or have some hint that they've traveled to a dimension where music is more powerful or in this dimension, like like magic is mainly conducted through music, something just for it to like make a little more suddenly sense. suddenly makes sense. Yeah, they just kind of launched into it. And I'm like, why? Why? The thing that didn't make sense to me and eventually like when you're doing something this big and you have so many a decade worth of stories that kind of need to line up. It, Wanda's. Um, reasoning for being the the antagonist of the story is makes sense. She wants her children, but the reason she wants America's powers is so that it's like an infinite amount of possibilities. It's like, oh, if my mm -hmm. children get sick, there is a solution somewhere yeah, else. I'll, I'll search the multiverse for a cure. Okay, this problem can just be solved just as easily with, you know, being nice to her. It's like, hey, can you pop over to this other universe and get me some ibuprofen? Because she's got a <laughs> fever. This kid's got a fever that we can't take care of. Yeah. Though, they do also kind of make it all make sense by saying that, that what, the, the Grimwald or <laughs> whatever the book is, the uh, it corrupts you. Yeah, the Darkhold. It makes you the bad guy yeah. and i liked that that was like yeah. all right so she elizabeth olsen can still come back and 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 you know redeem herself uh because we did see at the end when she like crumbled the castle uh which you know in this movie is a place that's like her throne but in the comics that's where wanda was born interesting neat little easter egg there oh, i didn't know uh, that. yeah that's cool but as the castle crumbles, you see like this flash of red that's either maybe her protecting herself or her teleporting out of there or something. So like, you know, Wanda's Wanda's not gone. She, she, yeah, yeah, if she you don't gone. see the body, they're not dead. And even if she did die doing that, we now have an infinite number of Wanda's to replace. Her. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of infinite possibilities, um, you know, they mention it many, many a times. We've got the uh, oh, what's it called when when the worlds collide? Incursion. I'm checking here through my notes. Yeah. Um, so with those in the comics, you have all these different multiverses that start to combine together 
And that is what leads to the Secret Wars, which a lot of people are theorizing is what we're getting next. Okay. Uh, like, you know, as a big part in the MCU is is all of these different multiverses colliding. And that's how we can get a Fantastic Four. That's how we can get X-Men brought into the world. So it'll be interesting if they do that because they are kind of following those steps right now. If they're doing Secret Wars next, then the next Spider-Man movies could be you know, Venom, but their version of Venom. And we know the symbiote is now in the universe thanks to the Eddie Brock post credit scene where he spent the entire No Way Home movie just sitting in Mexico and then disappears <laughs> and leaves leaves the symbiote behind. Yeah. So yeah, that's there. Well, okay. So there's a lot of room for, for them to grow and go. Uh, this probably has been my favorite Marvel anything mm-hmm. since... Uh, okay, No Way Home was really good. No Way Home and this were very, very good. But uh, truth be told, after Endgame, I've been a little bored with Marvel stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and even with the post credit scene, I, I don't know who Clea is. We, yeah. we talked about this last in the last Squirrel Punch podcast where I'm like, we're at a time where I don't know who any of these characters are. I don't know who America Chavez is. I don't know who Clea is. Uh, I'm along for the ride. Yeah, they're going to the dark dimension, though. That'll be interesting. Will it be interesting? I don't, I don't know. know. A lot of people are excited about it. I was like, I don't Just kind of interested in like the multiverse bringing it together. Just I don't know. We're going somewhere and he's got a third eye. So he's kind of corrupted, but he's not too corrupted. Looks good in casual clothes, though. Yeah. Yo, quick question. When they were traveling through multiverses, and I know you mentioned, and I didn't catch this, but M- Mustafar is in there? So they're in the What If series when the Watcher's fighting Ultron. Mm-hmm. They're, you know, going through all the different multiverses, mm-hmm. and there's a place in there that looks a lot like Vader's castle on Mustafar. Okay. And then people are saying that while uh, America and Doctor Strange are traveling through, one of the places looks like Mustafar again. There was again. a lava world, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just like, just give it to us. Just give <laughs> us our, even if it's non-canon, give us our Star Wars MCU crossover. Just know. give it to us. <laughs> I don't know if that would work. Yo, set, follow-up question about that scene, the the traveling through universes scene. They briefly enter a cartoon world that was not the Spider-Verse? Like, I don't think it was. It didn't look like the Spider-Verse. It didn't look like it. It did look like, um... Like some of like 90s animation though. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there is the X-Men 97 uh reboot cartoon coming to Disney Plus. So mm-hmm. connections. What it what it's showing us though is that a cartoon character can come to a live action world. So maybe that's how we get the X-Men in the world. When we get the Secret Wars, it's actually gonna be the X-Men 97 cartoon coming to the main world so we get to see yellow and blue outfits on the big screen, calling it now, Jovenshire with his predictions. It's just a theory, a lame theory. (laughs) Yo, here's my prediction. In Disneyland, it's either already happening or it will happen, they will be selling Pizza balls. Oh, and they won't be free. They won't be free, no. And like, if you are selling them, if you're one of the vendors, you have to dress like Bruce Campbell and hit yourself. So, you know, uh, when we've been doing these reviews, I, I kind of like to ask the question, um, you know, why should someone watch this or why should they not watch it? Anyone who's a Raimi fan should watch this. Absolutely. If you want something different than normal Marvel fare, watch this. If you're expecting cameos from a lot of other established Marvel characters don't watch this I mean there are kind of alternate versions but no one from the main the main verse I guess really other than Scarlet Witch I don't know overall it's a watch for me I can't think of a lot of reasons to not watch it I guess if you really hate musical fight scenes go go on. I think if you've got like a, a young like <laughs> teenager like that 10 to 12 range they've been probably watching a bunch of marvel movies maybe don't take them to this one because it gets a little freaky deaky i normally don't like marvel properties since endgame that don't kind of like expand the world as we know it and kind of like move all the story plots forward if it's too independent i don't like it though this is a very contained story Mm -hmm. and i still enjoyed it so that's nice um and and yeah just the second what you said if if you want something that's different uh, and if you are a fan of Raimi, this is a must watch. This is a must watch twice for sure. So this is the first time we see a an X-Men character uh, 
And the only other time we almost saw an X-Men character was during the fake out, which we both hate in WandaVision, where Quicksilver is there. And it should be Quicksilver. That's still dumb. It's still I, dumb. I think they finally were able to introduce an X-Men character because I believe, and I have no proof, but I believe in my soul, that writers were told they were not allowed to go into the multiverse until after Loki. I feel like they wanted oh. people to see on screen that, you know, Loki had kind of opened the door to the multiverse by killing Kang. Now, yeah, that's I right. We didn't really talk about that. I don't think that the writers who started writing WandaVision knew that was the case. And maybe Loki comes after WandaVision. Maybe they started writing that and then Loki started getting written afterwards. But I think when they originally casted the Quicksilver from the X-Men universe, I think they their intention was to make Wanda so powerful that she could pull characters out of the multiverse and she had pulled an alternate version of her brother in and was later told they can't do that because Loki hadn't opened the multiverse yet. That is my theory. It will never be confirmed because all the writers have NDAs and if it, that is the case, Marvel would never admit to such a, a kerfluffle or a snafu happening. Yeah. But that is what I think happened. That makes way more sense than just yeah. wanting to have in a character named Boner. Yes, um, which was terrible and which, everyone hated it. And that's our little review here of uh, Doctor Strange 2. Just, you know, two, two dads who like to talk about stuff on a show that they call Squirrel Punch because it's an awesome name. Two dads talking about Doctor Strange mom. Multiverse of <laughs> And as always, please, please, please tell us what you think. If you have seen this movie, if you watch this podcast without seeing the movie, um, what's wrong with you? We we warned you about spoilers. <laughs> but anyway, um, please tell us what you thought of this movie, what you think of our takes, what you disagree with us saying. If you agree with us and you want to throw that in there too and be like, good point, that always boosts our egos. But we want to hear for you, from you, so leave it in the comments. There it is. Till the next time, guys. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.